Today on Rappler, a tragic end for another Malaysia Airlines plane. Flight MH17 was shot down by surface to air vessels over war torn Ukraine. Three Filipinos perished on the flight, as well as the step grandmother of Malaysia's Prime Minister Najib Razak. And Russian President Vladimir Putin blames Ukraine for the plane crash. Hello, I'm Paterno S. Makel. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The crash of MH17 opens up old wounds for Malaysia, which is still struggling with the disappearance of flight MH370 just four months ago. 239 people went missing on MH370 and the wreckage has not been found to this day. 298 people were on board MH17. The father of an MH370 victim, G. Subramaniam, asks, quote, Why is there no peace of mind in our country? Tragedy after tragedy is happening to us. Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 was flying from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur when it came down late Thursday over eastern Ukraine. 43 Malaysians were on board. Reports say Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak's step-grandmother was among the Malaysians on board the flight. A family spokeswoman says Puan Sri Siti Amira was traveling alone. She was 83 years old and was the second wife of Najib's grandfather. U.S. officials confirm it was shot down by a surface-to-air missile, the offshoot of a violent rebellion by pro-Russia insurgents in Ukraine. Freelance journalist Noah Snyder told CNN locals around the crash site said, quote, The plane kind of exploded in the air and everything rained down in bits and pieces. The plane itself, the people inside. Ukraine's security service released supposed phone conversations of pro-Russian rebels admitting they had shot down the plane. The phone conversation you will hear was intercepted by the Security Service of Ukraine, or SSU. In the first conversation, militant Igor Bezle reports to his coordinator and said to be Russian GRU Colonel V. Geranin, quote, We have just shot down a plane, and SSU posted this audio clip on YouTube and put in the translations. In another conversation, comrades Grek and Major discussed the plane. Major said, Well, we are 100% sure that it was a civilian plane. Responding to his comrades' question, Major said they found no weapons, only civilian belongings. And the only document they retrieved was one belonging to a student from Indonesia, from Thompson University. In yet another conversation, this time supposedly between a militant and a general of the Cossacks Forces Army, the militant reported, it, quote, it fell down outside Grabovo, there is a whole lot of bodies of women and children. But the writing says, quote, Malaysia Airlines, what was it doing over the territory of Ukraine? The UN Security Council is expected to hold an emergency meeting on the incident. The shooting down of a Malaysia Airlines jet raises the question, why did the company continue to fly conflict zone airspace? Asian carriers like South Korea's Korean Air and ASEANA, Australia's Qantas, Taiwan's China Airlines and Singapore Airlines had abandoned flying this route months ago because of safety concerns. Philippine Airlines said its lone flight to London does not pass by Ukraine. Asked why Malaysia Airlines had not taken similar precautions, Prime Minister Najib Razak said international air authorities had deemed the flight path secure. According to the European Flight Safety Body, Eurocontrol, the doomed plane, was flying at a level known at, as 330, or approximately 10,000 meters, or 33,000 feet. The route had been close to level 320, but was cleared for those flying at the Malaysian plane's higher altitude. Euro European and U.S. airlines rerouted their flights in the aftermath of the attack. Analysts were divided on whether carriers like Malaysia Airlines had been negligent. Air safety expert Geoff Dell, based in Australia, told Sky News, if there's trouble spots on the globe, then you take a decision to avoid that area. Jakarta-based aviation consultant Jerry Sujatman says every airline had its own level of risk assessment. Flying above 30,000 feet is generally considered secure. Malaysia Airlines was not the only carrier using the route. Air India, Thai Airways, Air China, China Eastern Airways, and Vietnam Airlines had only decided to reroute their flights after the Malaysian crash. Asian markets stumbled on Friday 
due to the crash, sparking geopolitical tensions and sending the Wall Street tumbling. Shares in Malaysia Airlines, already battered by the loss of flight MH370 earlier this year, lost 17.8% in early exchanges on the Kuala Lumpur stock market. Analysts say the market plunge was triggered by, quote, nothing but the crash. The sell-off also affected other airlines. Three Filipinos who died in the MH17 plane crash come from only one family. Foreign Affairs spokesman Charles II confirms these details Friday. The victims are Irene Gunawan and children Cheryl Shania and Daryl Dwight Gunawan. Jose says the Philippines is ready to assist the Filipino victims' families if they, quote, would like to visit wherever the remains would be taken. The Philippines will also help repatriate the remains. The World AIDS community mourns Friday with 100 advocates reportedly on board MH17. The flight from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur was due to connect with another flight to Melbourne. The delegates were on their way to Melbourne for the 20th International AIDS Conference, which begins Sunday. Broadsheet The Australian reports the delegates on board are 108, but the International AIDS Society still could not confirm this. International AIDS Society President Francois Baresinos says the conference pushes through despite the tragic news. Some 12,000 participants, including former U.S. President Bill Clinton and rock singer and poverty activist Bob Geldof, are set to attend. Russian President Vladimir Putin blames Ukraine for the MH17 crash. Sydney Morning Herald reported that Putin said, quote, this tragedy wouldn't have happened if there was peace in this land, and undoubtedly, the state on whose territory this happened is responsible for this awful tragedy. Putin said it would not have happened if Kiev did not resume a military campaign against separatists. Ukraine says pro-Russian separatists are responsible for the, quote, terrorist act. The, accus the separatists deny the accusation. Putin says he asked government agencies to help investigate the disaster. Anger deepened around the world Friday as nations clamored for answers. Aside from the 43 Malaysians and 3 Filipinos, 154 Dutch nationals, 28 Australians, and 12 Indonesians were also on board. The United States rebuts Putin's claims, saying, quote, This incident occurred in the context of a crisis in Ukraine that is fueled by Russian support for the separatists. President Barack Obama warns, evidence among scattered debris must not be tampered with as the United States and other world leaders call for a prompt investigation. For a social media post of the day, a young Dutchman named Korpan posted a photo of the ill-fated Malaysian jet on Facebook minutes before he boarded. He posted in Dutch, quote, if it should disappear, this is what it looks like. Although there has been no confirmation Kor was on board, his photo of the aircraft on the tarmac is tagged, quote, near Schiphol Airport. It appears to have been taken from the gate as passengers waited to board. His picture had been shared more than 21,000 times on Facebook. Anti-graph court Sandigan Bayan enters a not guilty plea for Senator Juan Ponce and Rila's former AGG Reyes after she refused to enter a plea for her plunder case. Reyes was handcuffed when she was brought to the Sandigan Bayan for her arraignment over plunder charges in connection with the multi-million peso pork barrel scam. She is accused of conspiring to plunder 172 million pesos in funds from Enrile's discretionary funds. After her arraignment, Reyes complained of dizziness. An attending physician said Reyes has mixed re anxiety disorder and needs psychiatric treatment. The Sandigan Bayan orders the 90-day suspension of alleged plunderer Jingoy Estrada, a senator of the Philippines. Insiders tell Rappler the court ruled in favor of a motion filed earlier by the Ombudsman on Estrada's suspension. In a statement, Senate President Franklin Rilon says the Senate will, quote, fully comply with the order. Rilon added, Estrada's suspension will not affect the work of the Senate. Estrada is charged with plunder and graft in connection with allegations of stealing millions from his discretionary funds through bogus non-governmental organizations. Energy Secretary Jericho Petilia says power will be fully restored in Metro Manila and the rest of power distributor Meralco's franchise area by 10 p.m. Friday. The National Grid Corporation needs to repair transmission lines so power can be delivered from plants to distribution utilities like Meralco and electric cooperatives. As the country regains power, the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, or NDRRMC, reports death toll for Glenda rises to 54. 
three remain missing with at least 100 injured. The council says about 900,000 people are affected by the typhoon, of which half a million are displaced and moved to evacuation centers. As Glenda exits the Philippines, tropical storm Amatmo, or Henry, maintains strength as it moves northwest. State Bureau Pagasa says Henry entered the Philippine area of responsibility Friday morning. With maximum sustained winds of 65 km per hour near the center and gusts of up to 80 km per hour, Henry's eye is estimated at 880 km east of Giwan Eastern Samar, a town badly hit by Super Typhoon Yolanda or Haiyan in November last year. But Pagasa says the tropical storm, quote, will not yet affect any part of the country. Typhoon Ramasun left the Philippines Thursday and is now pummeling Hainan Island and Guangdong Province in China. Ramasun lashed Hong Kong overnight with heavy rain and strong winds, but the city was spared a direct hit as the typhoon veered west. China's National Meteorological Center on Thursday issued its highest, quote, red alert for the storm, its first such declaration this year. Singapore stops its national library from destroying two children's books with gay themes following an outcry over literary censorship in the city-state. Previously, Singapore's National Library Board, or NLB, set out to destroy three children's books with homosexual themes. The book, Who's in My Family?, has already been pulped. Information Minister Jacob Ibrahim orders the other two books, and Tango Makes Free and The White Swan Express move to the adult section where parents can borrow them for their children. On his Facebook page, Ibrahim says, quote, We stand by NLB's decision to remove the free books from the children's section. But he adds, The objections to the destruction of books, quote, reflect a deep-seated respect in our culture for the written word. Ibrahim says, quote, The decision on what books children can or cannot read remains with their parents. Earlier Wednesday, judges of the top literary prize quit over the National Library's plans to destroy the three children's books. Let's now look at Rapper's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 9, physicists in the United States report they compressed diamond to a density greater than that of lead, a feat yielding insights into the secrets of giant planets. A tiny synthetic sample of lead was bombarded with 176 laser beams, creating pressure waves, squeezing it to nearly four times its normal density. This simulates the pressures at the core of Saturn and should help astrophysicists fine-tune estimates of the creation of stars and giant planets. And at number 10, Oscar-winning director Ron Howard will make a new authorized documentary about the Beatles' touring years. The filmmaker says two surviving Beatles, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr, are giving their full cooperation to the movie, as are John Lennon and George Harrison's widows Yoko Ono and Olivia Harrison. The movie will recount the band members' early days in Liverpool, their touring days in Germany, their arrival in the United States, which includes their last public concert in 1966. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's for rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories with the most clicks. Most stories on our Mood Navigator today have to do with the crash of MH17. The first stories yielded sad votes, like this one, Philippines names mom and two kids killed in the MH17 tragedy, 76% sad. And the, 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 the story that, that broke the news, Malaysia plane shot down, 298 on board, 65% sad. But we see that... Uh, as the day progressed, the moods moved towards angry votes. Like this one, the audio shows uh, pro-Russian rebels shot down a plane, 88% angry. And the story that got the most number of votes today, deleted posts suggest Ukraine rebels downed Malaysian jet in error, 83% angry. From sad to angry, today, most people are angry. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Friday, July 18, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Paterno Asmakel. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.